so much of the energy that's going on presently is just focusing on like children, babies, a lot of energy is being put around that. So wow, this is that was <laughs> something that I wanted to talk to you about. The way this comes through, they are bringing up helping bring babies into the world. And for some reason, they keep acknowledging this whole emphasis on like miracle baby. <laughs> and it keeps coming through. And, I, and I'm, they're showing me a baby monitor weirdly. <laughs> and um, there's a, a scene from Insidious where the thing goes in the baby monitor. They're showing me that, but like jokingly. <laughs> wow. So a week after my grandmother passed, there is a, there's a white orb floating above wow. my daughter. And I whisper, I whisper Nana in my room where she can't hear me. And then my daughter answers and says, Nana. I have a full chill. Oh, wait, oh my god. So like, yeah, so yeah. It, I mean, yeah, there's a baby monitor. Yes, yeah, so yeah, it makes I, sense. <laughs> what an interesting video, too. You can so clearly see it. Oh, it's yeah. yeah it's, no question about it. Oh, it's real. Yeah. I, and I was, she was away, uh, and it was sort of, it was just Papa Bear. And yeah. I was going, you know, I was kind of freaking out right. at first, and then, you know, sort of settled in, and then, you know, I had the idea that it was, you know, it was my grandmother, and then, you know, for her to say it, who she can't, you know, my daughter can't hear me, she wasn't talking at the time. That's amazing. I love that. Yeah, that was a week <laughs> after she passed, and it was that one night. Yeah, that was really And special. all night. <laughs> that's that's Daddy's calling. Yeah, that's Daddy's calling. Okay, for some reason, I just heard something along the lines of, like, gentle giant, or, like, a uh, reference usually to a dog size, not necessarily matching its temperament. I'm basically seeing this big dog, and I'm seeing a, a little boy on a big dog. <laughs> but the boys used to do that. Really? Yeah, they used to ride on them. That's cute. What a gentle giant. <laughs> yeah, that's what made him so special. I love that. Yeah. That's amazing. They both grew up with him, so they would always, they would, them riding on him was like normal. But his demeanor, his true self, his energy was a gentle giant. He was always the most unselfish member of the whole entire pack. Wow. Caesar always said he always felt like a human, and he was here to heal. This dog's not referencing to an instantaneous passing. This is kind of referencing to the last, like, six months of life. Very much, like, natural. Like, this is the natural way of things. Yes. It was a natural cause. Natural cause, yeah. OK. So the way I would describe this, there's this feeling of, like, not feeling good and then actually feeling better and then then it goes down. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know so there is a sense of acceptance that comes through yeah. from this animal and there's a sense of acceptance and a sense of peace. Yeah. And it's actually a very complex thought for a dog <laughs> because usually that's the sentiment I get with people. Mm -hmm. That's really insightful for me. I've never connected with a, a dog that had like that much self-awareness is kind of the way I would describe oh, it. Oh, you were special. <laughs> mm. Oh, yes. Daddy was definitely self-aware. Yeah? A really incredible like, just an energy. It's like a powerful soul. But, yeah. There's a lot of feelings of like her having to do a lot of things on her own when yeah. she shouldn't have had to. And so she would have really, from a very early age, kind of had to show resilience and show independence. And when I'm connecting to that side, there's this feeling around her, depression and anxiety. And I feel like this is something she very strongly would have dealt with. So there's a pride for you basically taking these steps to kind of be open about what you go through emotionally, mentally, ah! and, and I feel like you'll have some kind of opportunities that allow you to kind of use your platform for that. Wow. And I think that awareness will make family very proud. That's really even cool. Even on the other side. That's so. really, really cool. I love that. <laughs> That's awesome. Mental health isn't something you necessarily want to talk about, mental health, addiction, but I feel comfortable sharing that I do struggle with these things. Honestly, there's just a lot of feelings of like tragedy around her. Do you know if this was the case or if I, she had any? What I do know about her is very little okay. because it was tragic. She died in childbirth when my mom was very young. My mom was around 10. It was so painful for my mom when she passed away that like she just kind of like needed to set it aside. So. No, it makes sense. Yeah. She's like the strongest person I know. That's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you know of any Donnies or Ronnies? Any Donnie Ronnie connections? Because it keeps coming through. Like a Donnie or a Ronnie? Donnie is my father, and Ronnie is my my dad's youngest brother who has passed. 
Okay. Dad's still alive, correct? Yes. Gotcha. It'd be his, I assume, brother's way of trying to connect mm -hmm. and just acknowledge that he's kind of watching him like a hawk. <laughs> it's the way I would describe this. Either like, dad needs to go to the doctor, dad needs to get a checkup, there's something with this, but he's kind of like shaking him like, come on now, <laughs> get with it. So relay that to him if you can, like just get a checkup, being on top of his health. Do you know of any other um, family members in the family who were gay? My because uncle, they're bringing this my, up. My uncle Ronnie was gay. Gotcha. And, and him and my father, because my father was the oldest and yeah. he was the youngest brother. My... I needed to know because they're bringing up the other gay family member and they're like bringing it up. And, and I want you to know he lives on through you is what this message is basically. So good you message. Are <laughs> I, um, I'm, I'm shocked. Aww. I don't know if I can even work now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm just like, I can't believe that. I mean, wow. Ronnie was my uncle. He had a hard life and he died on a construction site. Um, but he, his life, he always was trying to prove to his brothers and to his father that he was a man and, and that kind of thing. And I come from Texas and it's a, that kind of family. And you know, my father is retired military and stuff. And, and I really truly believe in my heart that it was because of my uncle that my father was more tolerant of me and, and the things with me. When I finally came out, my family handled it so well. So, you know, I truly believe that he paved that for me. So it's amazing. It would be no way that no one would know that. Like, there's no reason you would know that. He's putting a really strong emphasis on a symbol that I see of being equal. And there's an acknowledgement with each sibling, there's an acknowledgement of an equal amount of love. But when it comes to family and responsibility, he views a lot of the responsibility that exists as being put on you more than others. He sees himself as being very similar to you because your dad was very motivated and a hard worker no matter what. Mm -hmm. and you're very much the same way. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that other family members aren't hard workers because clearly they are. Mm -hmm. But he's coming to you and basically acknowledging that you've had to take on or compensate some responsibilities that your sisters might or should have maybe done. Mm -hmm and you've been left with having to do them. Mm -hmm. And when he comes through, there's a feeling of complete pride because he sees himself in you and your ability to do that, Aww. to toggle, to navigate, to juggle all of these different things. And I just want you to know, your dad sees himself in you more than anyone. Oh, thank you. Okay. The feeling that comes through is that there is an acknowledgement basically from mom of every time we go on stage, every time we perform, every time we are all glammed up. The feeling that comes through is that there would have been this thing that would have been done kind of repeatedly, but it's it's like a little nod mm -hmm. to mom. Yeah. Uh, does that make sense? Yes, yes, yeah. Um, I do it, this is what I do, is that you know, when I performed for her when I was a kid, yeah. she, I could do anything in the living room. Yeah. I could do anything. It was always great. She, no matter how terrible I was, it was always great. Right. So what I do is whenever I go on stage, I remember that I think, this is mama's living room. I'm gonna go on stage. Whatever you do is fine. And so that calms my nerves. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, something's coming through really quick. Sorry. Um, I'm seeing Diana Ross randomly. This is so weird. Mm -hmm. So there's a Diana Ross connection and it's your mom. Well, the connection is that um, I was obsessed with Diana Ross and the Supremes, <laughs> and I was so obsessed that I would perform the song with a broom for my mother <laughs> in the living room. And years later, you know, she and I became friends. Right. I love these earrings. So I assume these were your mom's? These were yes. hers, yep, yep. <laughs> I, I was probably wearing those earrings when I did the impersonation. She comes through and she acknowledges that you miss that. I do. <laughs> because it's like, I miss being able to just go to mom and just be her son, yeah. you know? She's acknowledging that obviously since her passing, she's seen your achievements. When she passed, she knew you were a star. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that. But she's saying, you're my special, like you're my, you're my baby boy. I know that. And the feeling is like, that's always going to be the case. She'd, she'd gone to see a psychic before I was born. Right. And the psychic said, it's a boy and he's gonna be famous. Wow. So everything you're saying is, is right on. Right before her passing, we got to see uh, a news report on MTV talking about my new album and what was about to happen to me. She looked at me and said, you are crazy. <laughs> Which was her way of saying, you made it. You did it. 
we're finally at that place that had been predicted all those years ago. And I knew that it was her blessing that go on, do live your destiny.